connecting with the feeling of the liveness in my body and connecting with the breath. It is the life force, the vitality through which we can co-create with life and in our unique way. Welcome to the Ecstatic Woman Podcast. Together, along with some amazing guests, we'll explore and tap into our inner wisdom and have meaningful conversations about developing our ability to self-discover, create, and be present in the world, while also uncovering new ways to think, feel, and cultivate our sense of empowerment so we can live our lives ecstatically. Now let's welcome our host, Alara. Hello, Singh. hello, and welcome to another episode of the Ecstatic Woman podcast, where we activate and inspire women in their power, in their authenticity, and in their bliss. I'm your host, Alara Sage. And my beloveds, maybe you have seen, you know, myself speak about aliveness, you've seen about the terminology of aliveness. Do you really understand what that means? How to connect to that wild aliveness within you and how to bring that forth, how to express that, how to, how to allow that aliveness to express your most authentic, most vibrant, most passionate self. Today, we're going to have a wonderful conversation with one of my beloveds, just mm -hmm. somebody who's so incredibly dear to me. Gigi is a deep friend of mine, um, you know, a collaborator. We're always in spaces together, creating, connecting. We spend a lot of time just in the energy of sisterhood. So very, very deep uh, relationship here that we have to share with you and bring forth this topic. And Gigi is a wild embodiment and empowerment guide for women to embrace their wild aliveness and unique essence to thrive. My beloved, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It feels so good to share this space together and to be on your beautiful, ecstatic women, grounded, like intelligent space. It feels really exciting to be here with you doing this. Not even really sure why it took so long. I don't know <laughs> what I was like. When it hit me the other day, I was like, well, have I not asked her? Oh, I guess I have. <laughs> okay. So here we are. Here we are. So, my love, what does aliveness mean to you? Such a beautiful question. I was just feeling into this before we jumped on and actually connecting with the feeling of aliveness in my body and connecting with the breath. And I feel the breath has so much to do with finding and reconnecting and reawakening with our aliveness and so for me and for how I teach it it is the life force the vitality through which we can co-create with life and in our unique way so for those of you who are kind of like "Ooh, wild aliveness what does that mean really it's like the natural way in which you are you know created to work with your body, your expression, who you are. And it's really a beautiful, beautiful journey to tap in to how you really want to show up in your life. It's like, you know, the activation energy, if you were to kind of light um, a match, it's like mm -hmm. the spark of which brings the fire. And the more mm. that we can work with that wildness, that connection with nature, which is such a big part of how I guide women, is reconnecting with nature. As mm. our bodies are so in sync with nature, this is how we can, instead of trying to kind of uh, logically understand aliveness, it's a very physical, embodied experience. So to really, you know, start to connect more and to start to grow in our ability to really thrive in life, connecting with nature is going to show us that as women because Gaia, Mother Nature, Earth, where we live, is, you know, our, our greatest teacher and our ally. Mm -hmm. And that is how personally... I continue to connect with who I am through the cycles and the seasons because we're never the same. 
it's mm. tuning into the rhythm of nature and really working with her through the breath and we talk about this a lot don't we whenever we're together the breath like the simplicity of breathing into our bodies and breathing into deeper parts of our bodies like our hearts and our bellies and our wombs and our root to really working on like playing with that and practicing bringing vitality and breath into deeper parts of your body so that you actually awaken that aliveness you turn it on because parts of our body in our society are very shut down because we're using mm -hmm. our mind a lot and we're told to use our mind a lot and we're told to sort of just keep going keep moving keep you know progressing and that kind of leaves our body behind if we're not tuning into it so if we can learn to like really welcome on the full the full channel of our bodies we're going to feel so much more alive and so the breath is is really the the key to all of this is to really feeling that aliveness in your body through you know welcoming in the breath into your life into you know each morning and and I find when I don't do that I really I notice it I don't mm. feel as spacious I don't feel as kind of confident even in the way that I am bringing myself into my day because then I get you know a little bit more contorted or shut down and then I just have to remind myself throughout the day breathe have you breathe have you just been with the breath and let it circulate through your body to really yeah enliven you mm, yeah so the breath is such a vehicle isn't it of connection and of sensation too like when we're breathing audibly and breathing into our body there's sensation there you feel the movement you feel the expansion you feel the contraction you feel the flow you feel the movement of the air in and out of your body it's sensational and i feel like aliveness is also sensational and i also feel like when we bring it into like wild aliveness which i really mm -hmm. love that term and i love that you're bringing that here you know, it's like taking authenticity and you're you're like liberating it, you know, into our most it's like beyond authentic because it feels like to me like it has this liberated energy to it that you are liberated in your sexual power you are liberated in your power you are liberated in your expression right you're liberated in your ability to feel everything and be present with it so to me it really has this like liberation energy with it yeah and also what was coming through with you saying that is it's bigger than us it's bigger than us that's mm. what's so powerful about it is that we're connecting with a source bigger than us the wild energy of nature of source mm. of the divine of all of it it's bigger than us so therefore we can tune into that that's something that is wanting to move through us to that's bigger than us that is wanting to co-create with us I think that's a huge part of the journey as well as like really allowing yourself to welcome that in, to welcome mm. in that fullness of what life has to offer you. And then mm. you can feel, you know, oh, I want to, I want to feel that aliveness and I want to feel that inspiration for who I am and what I want to do and what I'm here for. And I know for me, like that is the biggest the biggest support whenever I'm like going through the ebbs and flows of life is just remembering that wildness is, is bigger than me and it, it wants me to live and it wants me to feel and it wants me to have a sensational experience, exactly, to have like a, a body-based experience. And I think when we connect in with nature, again, going back to nature as women, she's the bigger part of who we are. She's a reflection of who we are. She's the the mother body to our bodies and so tuning in with her breathing with her is just this incredibly mm -hmm. orgasmic experience mm -hmm. and and i believe that's that's where we we understand that term orgasmic and it doesn't sound like something just kind of oh that sounds nice like orgasmic <laughs> what does that mean but orgasmic state is to really be in that fullness of 
you know, connection with that wild aliveness and letting the sensation, letting yourself feel, letting yourself feel the whole array of emotions as well, and not just pleasure, but also, mm. you know, the the other the emotions, the pain as well, and to really allow for that, you know, to not feel um, to not feel afraid of that. I feel when we work with our emotional states and our emotional expression, that's so powerful for us as women when we really take back something that I feel, you know, we have shut down is our emotional intelligence just to be able to feel all the emotions and move through them. Like with childbirth, that's the example. It's like our bodies know how to go through each state of you know emotion is a huge mm-hmm. thing to birth a child yet our bodies knows exactly what to do if we just listen to her so that's really what happens when we start tuning into that innate wisdom that our body has um it's it, yeah sensation it's big isn't it like when we when we start mm-hmm. to really like tune in with our sensuality and i really teach sensuality as practice to turning on that world aliveness is you know touch and breath and sounding and you know pleasure practices and this is how we tune up our bodies again from being you know in a numb state of like pushing forward and just getting stuff done and disregarding our body it's remembering to tune in and turn on and just you know dial up like we would with anything we need to to dial in and and tune up and turn on our bodies to receive information Yeah, I think the birth uh, example is such a great one because if you look at our society now, I mean, it drives me nuts when I'm watching movies and they just always show, they always depict women giving birth on their back. And if you have ever given birth, that is the most painful and completely illogical way to give birth. I mean, that's where the baby's trying to come out and you're sitting there like that doesn't even make sense. You're literally creating like a kink right there where the baby's trying to move through the canal. And, you know, when women are left up to their to their again, to the movement of their body and that natural connection and wisdom, they want to move. They want to keep moving. They want to shift positions. They want to moan. They want to groan. Maybe they want to scream. You know, they want to express in different ways, verbal expression, physical expression. You know, it's the same as how animals go through birth. And so we have this, I mean, I think it's, again, just such a great example of like, oh, let's not be alive. Let's Mm -hmm. be on a very cold doctor's table, you know, sitting upright, numbed from an injection in your spine and now give birth. And you have no connection to what is actually going on in your body versus, you know, like natural birth, which I did. And yeah, it fucking hurts. And I wasn't even really connected to my breath at the time I gave birth to both of my boys completely naturally. Um, I think now it would be even more powerful of an experience, but I still did it. And I still was with that pain and I still was with my body. And it was a lot about moving and feeling like where, where does it feel good and where, what position does my body want to go in, you know, and, and I had support, uh, as well by midwives and they it was really just like you do you you know they were not there to tell me what to do they were not there to tell me what position to be in that was really up to me to find that flow and find that rhythm and i think coming back to the experience the recognition that that is our wildness you know that we are we are meant to feel the pain and express it and ah oh, this hearts and and breathe into our body and, you know, make all of these noises and emotions and movement. I think that's such a beautiful expression of the wild aliveness. And conversely, our modern medicine of let's stick you in a box. Hey, let's even schedule you into our system. Yeah. And we're just going to have a C-section on this day and time because that fits everybody's schedule. Does that work for you? Agree that works for me. Like who cares about the body? 
Who cares about the baby? Who cares about anything that is of natural rhythm? We are going to, you know, force it to occur at this time and date. And how much that goes against our natural aliveness and our natural expression. Yeah, it's, it, it always comes back to birth, doesn't it? Because that's how we came into the world. And that is what we do. You know, we're designed as women and to have this, in, this powerful experience of all the emotions and to really tune into that body wisdom and to trust our bodies. And that is not something we've been taught. We have not been taught to trust our bodies. And this is the part that I feel so passionate about is teaching women to trust themselves. Like, yes. you know, I don't need to tell you anything, actually. You already know it's about holding the space for you to find what that is and to explore it and to awaken to it and to play with it as well. And that's where expression comes in. Like you said, like sounding and, you know, you, you need to move and you need to kind of find out like how your body can move and mm -hmm. that can be a scary journey if you haven't done that or if you are just like well I don't know about what you're talking about like I haven't sounded or made primal wild sounds before it's just about creating a space where that's safe and that's welcome and that anything that you sound or say or how you move there's no judgment yet we've been so judged as women to how our bodies should look how we should move how we should speak you know how we should be as women and this is such a powerful time because we're you know we're breaking down these boxes and we're saying no and we're moving and we're progressing in so many ways but this kind of like wild aliveness where we get to really be like something that we think is wrong because we've been taught so often that, you know, the, the woman who is mad it is she should be shamed. Mm -hmm. She should be cast out. She should be burned. She should, you know, all these things that come up, which are very real experiences for us as women that, yeah, we're the outcast, we're the prostitute. We, we get named all these things because you can't contain the wild. It's like you can't contain nature. It's part of like being here and to be able to like understand that wildness where you can work with it instead of be afraid of it so fucking powerful mm -hmm. it's like honor that in you and that is going to bring you into deeper places in your body and your life and it, your experience that you never thought possible with you know with your logical mind or what you've been taught and that's where play and curiosity come in like, that's where I teach. Okay, it might sound like a big thing to somebody to be like, I now own my wild. I'm going to start screaming. There's like, you know, steps to it. And there for you as well to find that authenticity. Like, how do I feel with this? And can I play with this? And, you know, what's over here? I feel called to go here because each woman is so different. And for me to just, you know, work with women is just such a joy because it's something I'm so passionate about. Like I want women to feel like they can be themselves and to thrive in that way because we all deeply, deeply yearn for that, that fulfillment of, of self, of fulfillment of our unique self. And I want to see that. I want to live in a world where each person is being who they are. It's really fucking exciting to me. So that's where, you know, that's what I want to see. And that's why this work for me is so, so important and why I'm passionate about it. Yeah. And I love how you were saying, you know, women have really been taught to, well, I mean, for a long time, it was really be quiet, right? And then, you know, we're only allowed to say certain things, uh, speak in certain ways, be proper. I mean, geez, the English know all about that, don't you guys? Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> and yet there's something really powerful about the connection between our voice and our jaw yeah. and our sacral, our pelvis and our power. And, you know, this is something I've experienced a lot in the act of sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I never used to be super vocal. I wasn't quiet sexually, but 
the amount of noise I make now and the noises that I make now very, I mean, it goes all over the board. It goes from like primal, almost animal noises to like very high pitched noises and, and everything in between. But there's something that happens like when I'm expressing and it's just this very authentic expression. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be a porn star. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not, oh, just, right. oh, you know, it's like, no, it's just like the sound that wants to emerge mm -hmm. from the pleasure and from the experience. It just continues to open my body and open yeah. my body. And I wanted to point to the audience at the very beginning when you were breathing, you know, you were audibly breathing, you know, it was, it was like, ah, oh, you know, that power of hearing ourselves and releasing that expression and how that truly activates and opens our power. I know that has been your experience and I know you have so much to say on that. Oh boy. It's the body, exactly, the body being able to expand and for our expression to come out, as you said, we're not logically, we're not thinking about, I want my expression to sound like this. We're not manipulating or controlling it. It's coming from this deeper place of, I'm going to just say whatever comes out. I'm going to say a sound, whatever it is. I'm not even hearing myself. I'm not even tuned in. I'm literally just going for it. Mm -hmm. And that is what I want women to feel they can do is simply let their body guide them and make sounds where they feel maybe they're holding on to certain things in their bodies oh i've got some like something in here and i want to express that i can feel it in my shoulders or i feel it in my mm. lower back and i just want to move it through my body because that's how we we release and we liberate like you're saying it's internal mm. like it comes internally through the sounds that we make and through the movement that we make and that is how we do free and liberate ourselves and it's so powerful when we work with our wounds as well and our pussies and our throats because like you said they're connected our voice and our womb and our power if we are working with the breasts and we're working with the sound we're working with really like awakening to that power and that energy source we are just opening up basically it's like when our bodies open up we're opening up our lives it's like mm. it's literally a reflection it's like the more that we can connect with our bodies mm. and the aliveness that is in turn going to source your life with more vitality and reflect back to you more opportunities more potential more love more more of what you want as an individual because it is unique to all of us, but really creating space in the body creates space in our lives. And it's just so powerful. It's actually incredibly simple because it's the way that animals are, like you touched on before, like that primal kind of, I'm just connected to how my body mm. wants to move, how I want to make sounds. Like they have no judgment. It's just we have so much conditioning and so much judgment about what is right and what is not. And to fit into one lane or to fit into a box and yeah it, it's just it's so beautiful and it's also about we're not looking to be different in that way because I know that can kind of feel a bit overwhelming too it's not like we're going after being this like really different wild person it's we're each doing it individually and what that looks like for you so it might sound kind of overwhelming because I know whenever I talk about this, it can sound a lot, but it's really unique to you. You will be the expression of who you are and how you want to express. And that might not be, you know, how I do or how you do, or it might not be massive sounds. It might not be huge primal roars. It might be softer and gentler. And, you know, it's different for everyone. And that's what's so exciting about it is really exploring how you want to express and your essence and your creativity so important because i think when we hear these words like the wild woman 
uh, we think of these, you know, women in like loy and these cloths and these leather and they're, you know, they're out in nature and they're, you know, they've got things all over their face and they're, you know, really in this very, you know, exaggerated expression. So I think it's really important to reconnect it to, yeah, that looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it and it's really it's it's not about it being anything yeah. other than what it wants to be. Like that's it, right? Otherwise we're just conditioning ourselves in another way. Exactly. Right. We're just programming ourselves to be something different rather than just like this is what I'm feeling and this is what I'm experiencing, which can also be different every single day. You know, some yeah. days you might feel more rawr and loud, and other days you might feel more relaxed and peaceful. I really wanted to point out what you said, because I think it was so well put, so beautiful that, you know, expand your body, expand your life and really want the audience to hear that, you know, anywhere that you're feeling like you want more expansion, you want more, you know, you want more love, you want more support, you want more adventure, you want more wealth, whatever that is. I hope you really hear Gigi say that, expand the body, expand your life. That was such a beautiful tagline there. My, yeah, that's got to be your tagline. I love that one. That's hot. That is hot. Uh, really, so cool. really good. We just like landed a million dollar tagline right there. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah. So give us some examples or some stories either of your own story of kind of moving through this aliveness or a client's story of moving through this aliveness i always find story is such a great way for people to connect to how this actually comes through in our physical reality hmm. one example comes to mind because of the birth story but i have a few different things to say so i'm going to go with this one first because I've worked with a couple of women who have reclaimed birth trauma through this process, like a couple of sessions of simply letting themselves move their body, primal sounding, because they weren't allowed to do that in, in labor. And that's affected and constricted their expression, their voice and their womb. And that's just come up in a session. So that wasn't actually something we talked about before. But it's quite common if women have felt restricted or a lot of pain during birth, there can be, you know, the trauma that is, is still in the body. And so I've worked with women to just, you know, create the space in their body and really um, make peace with that and shed that and then open to it. And that's been so powerful to both witness and I really see, you know, the the after effects of that, of so much more space being created in the body. So birth trauma is one thing that is, I mean, just such such a gift, because as we were talking about, it can be so painful and difficult and you can just feel completely numb and cut off from it. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's a beautiful space to hold for women. Yeah, I want to comment on that because that's I, I experienced this with a horse. I used to work on horses all the time, but I have some friends who have horses and I just always go and, and give love and healing to the horses. And I was working on this, one of my friend's horses, and I just go out into the pasture and the horses come to me. I let it be their choice and, and how they want me to work with them. Yeah. And I was working with this one female and wow, we were just in her womb and in her reproductive system. And I was talking to the owner and they were like, oh, she was like, yeah, she was bred, which with horses, they basically rape the mares. They tie them down largely, not the entire industry, but the majority of the industry ties the mares down if they're, if it's a live cover or it's, you know, it's a, it's not a live cover, but live covers, they, they shackle their hooves. They, they don't allow them to move and they're yeah. just, they're just penetrated. And she was holding in this energy. And, and every time she would go into her cycle, she would have these very, the owner was like, she became so moody and so difficult to deal with every time she would come back into her cycle. And I didn't know any of that. We kind of were discussing it as we were, as I was working with her. And then the interesting thing is I, I hit this one energy and she, it just popped to the point that one of the other horses was like, whoa, what was that? And he came over because he was like the herd leader. And she left me, she went over to the water trough and she just 
kicked and like did all of this action and we were both like oh my god she's reliving that physically right now and doing all of the actions uh, like totally who i feel it right now that she couldn't do in that moment because she was shackled down and totally changed her now when she comes into cycles she doesn't have that energy anymore she doesn't hit those deep blocks anymore in that pain so it's super intriguing very similar yeah that's so beautiful and it also leads on to more of that conversation because sexual trauma as well is a similar thing for women yeah. as well it's something i've worked with so deeply on myself to find more space, to find more sensation, to find more pleasure, to find more connection with myself. I've worked really deeply on my room and with other women to really clear that, the, the sexual trauma that we have, whether it's being penetrated where we didn't want to, but we didn't even know, or maybe it was that we were, you know, abused or assaulted in some way. There's so much that we carry in our bodies. And if we've had those kind of experiences, they're going to be within our bodies and I mean it's a brave thing to do and I always just like hold so much love and space for women who are wanting to work through if it's a particular deep pattern but it's so powerful because we're really un, you know we're on uh we're undoing the kink because we, we're kinked mm. off because we've had like a experience it's just not what we wanted we didn't say yes to that or in some way it's just really uncomfortable and unpleasant and so therefore we didn't get to express that or maybe we haven't cried about it or maybe we haven't talked about it maybe we haven't shared about it so all of that is the same as is also being able to speak about it to someone that can be a huge relief because you know sometimes we think and i know for myself i was like oh nothing bad happened to me and then it was like mm. the story and the story and the story and it kind of unraveled it's like wow actually you know this mm. is this is deep and this is affecting mm. me and I'm carrying this around in my body and this is a burden and this is this is weight and and space mm. taken up in my body that I, I want to liberate myself from so also yeah sexual trauma or situations where we have experience something that that was not what we wanted yes and you had some other examples or some other thing that you wanted yeah. to express well with how to kind of open up to it it's a lot of play that's how i also work with women who are wanting to kind of make uh you know more fullness or pleasure or sensation in their life there's a lot of play like reclaiming play is a huge thing for us as well isn't it like really mm -hmm. giving ourselves the space and the opportunity to play and to find out what it is that we like and to connect with our inner child and to express through you know art or writing or clothing and so this is something that i love to ask women again what what is it that you feel excited about like what turns you on is it clothes is it art is it writing and just follow the thread of like finding that aliveness again it's like we have to nurture the soil it's a similar mm -hmm. thing i mean maybe it's gardening as well lots lots of you know people love to garden it's like what turns you on let's find that out and then follow that thread and and i mean movement is an absolute like that's like a main one that i work with is movement and sounding because when we start to reclaim our bodies and we start to, I want to move like this instead of I have to move like this because this is what someone thinks is sexy and appealing to them. Like, no, how do I want to move? That's such a like reframe and that's so liberating for us to not be thinking about what other people are thinking about us, but for us to think about how we want to feel without like pleasing anyone else that's a big part of this reawakening of of our own aliveness is following what it is that we want to explore that we want to express and how we want to do it so it really is a kind of deep nurturing and tending to our own bodies um and that is is such an adventure it really feels like an adventure and it's a journey to really you know come back onto the path of this is me 
I'm not going to do that path that I was doing for a long time or the other path that didn't feel like me. There was always something that was missing or I felt unfulfilled. And let's follow that that path that is is exciting and maybe scary. You know, there's always fear when we're like moving into a new place that is going to give us a lot. It's okay to feel fearful about it. It's just taking that first step and then following the breadcrumb. Yeah, the movement is such an important piece. And it was big for me. You know, I used to not be able to dance unless I was drunk. And I didn't, I was I've never been a big drinker just because I haven't been. And so I didn't dance very much, even though when I was doing it, I really, I really, really loved, loved it. it. Mm -hmm. But I needed that, you know, that alcohol to get me to a place where I didn't care what other people were thinking. Because it was so ingrained in me that like, it was like, am I doing it right? You know, does this, does this look good? Like whatever. And through the reclamation of this for myself, now it's just, I don't even think of it as dancing. It's just like movement. And it's just, I don't know, however it wants to come through. And there's no judgment. There's no, it's just the, the joy of it, right? It's not even like, I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing or how it looks. Yes. I'm literally just enjoying the sensation of my body moving however it wants to move. And it's it's so liberating. And, and now my boys are, you know, nine and 11. And, you know, my one son, he has so much mojo. He can just bust out and all these beautiful dance. But he's starting to get self-conscious, you know, and I'm like, just do it, sweetie. Like, forget about whatever is around you. Because, like, his body just wants to move and he just, he's he got it, you know. But I say that to my older son, too, who who doesn't have mojo and dances all, like, awkward. But it's just him, you know. It's just how he wants to dance. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so we all get together and we just move and just have fun with it, you know. And I feel like. The more that we let the kids do that, the more that we let ourselves do that. If if the audience are mothers, you know, the more that you're just doing that for yourself in front of your kids mm -hmm. and with music, with no music, right? Just mm -hmm. having fun with the sensation of your body moving. It's so liberating. That's what it was to me. It was so liberating to just be like, ah, this just feels good. And that's all that matters. Yeah, it's the joy piece, isn't it? It's like, what is bringing me joy and how yeah. ever that looks is okay. The, the fact is it's bringing me joy and that's the juice. That's the life force. That's the inspiration. And then you can take into the rest of your day as well. I think that's why that's so powerful, that movement, that your own free movement is that you're just kind of, yeah, you're turning yourself on and you're letting the juice just come and it just, it just will. Mm. It's just will, and it's amazing when I'm mm. in spaces with women, especially in person, when, you know, you just give the space and to be like, now go, <laughs> just find whatever that is and be it and be celebrated for it. And I think the more that we can do that as women together as well, we're rewriting the story of, oh, we have to look like this because we empower one another. And I've found that there's like this amazing force field that happens when women come together and, and do this kind of liberated expression because it, it just, I can almost see like the unraveling of the, the stories of the past, the, the conditioning. Yeah. It's like we're literally unraveling it together because when we're together, we're in that, yeah, magnified field of of liberation and it's just so it's so powerful and you can have you know completely kind of life-altering experiences and I've definitely had those when I'm in space with with women and it's it's just free and it's liberated and you know we see one another instead of compete with one another mm. we lean into one another as, instead of retract and and hold back and it's yeah, it, I I do find working together as women on on this liberation and wild liveness is even more supportive because it can feel like it can feel lonely 
I mean, I know it has for me, and I've been on this journey for a long, long, long time. And then finding women, you know, you being one of them to really explore with is just, it just magnifies it, doesn't it? Really just turns it up. Yeah, and when we feel that liberation, we hold that space for others, don't we? And it becomes celebration. That's what you and I have experienced. And just like, truly, I mean, you know, looking back, I realized how much in competition I was with other women. I would have never admitted it, even to myself, because I didn't like that. But I was. That was the truth of it. I was in competition with them because I was in competition with myself. I was yeah. always in a state of judgment of self. So it's going to project out into other people. It just is. Our self-judgment does. And so when we come into this state of liberation, it's like all of a sudden we're just like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. I'm celebrating you. I love you so much. Like we just lift each other. We inspire each other. And then it's just this catalyst energy, isn't it? Because we just keep doing it. You know, I do it to you. You do it back to me. We're just like, da, 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 da. explosion of, you know, this beautiful sisterhood and like true sisterhood like the true desire for the other person to succeed and be her joy and be her aliveness yeah Woo! the fire of that the truth of that is just so electrifying isn't it once you've experienced it if you haven't experienced it it's hard to like understand it's just like that sounds like a nice idea but really, it's, it is so liberating and it frees us up because, like you said, we kind of reflect back to each other all the time. Like if you have close uh, women relationships and you're not able to have a truthful, open space, then that's going to, you know, that's just going to keep reflecting back to you um, and it's going to yeah. keep you stuck in some way. And so kind of finding that flow in your in your connections with your women friends even just trying something new like going out and doing something like this like playing outside skipping in nature something super simple to change up you know the just the way that you're relating to each other and yourself it, it's it's very powerful yeah and to like find that awkwardness right so when i feel like when you first kind of start on something like this it can it can feel awkward and if you're feeling awkward then you know you're on the right track because you're breaking out of that like i've got to do it this way and you're beginning to explore and that's that like awkwardness like oh i don't is this what i do and if you just stay with it because with awkwardness we tend to like shut ourselves back down like oh no don't want to be awkward don't want to feel awkward but if we're just like with people that we adore, and I love how we're talking about like sisterhood here. If you just like, like call it out, like, ah, oh, this feels so awkward, right? Or like, oh, this looks so awkward and we're being so awkward and then just laugh about it, right? And then just move through that awkwardness. That's where it's like, oh, there it is, right? Yeah. There's that space. It just feels natural and free and good. What would you recommend as women are listening to this and they're like, oh, this all just sounds so bizarre and delicious and out of the box and all the things. But, you know, how do they take those first steps? I know you've kind of mentioned a few, but something very that they can apply right now in their life to begin this process for themselves. I would recommend music and exploring movement. That is what I would say. This is something so simple. Put on a song that you love, you know, anything that you want to listen to that you love listening to and let your body move. Close your eyes. Let it be an internal mm. process. And really just follow, like, how does this rhythm, this beat, this music that I love inspire joy in me? And how do I want to express that through my body? And doing that, like, every single day, like, one song is a huge step towards connecting with your aliveness because you're choosing it for you. And choice as we know is incredibly powerful once we choose to do something you're almost like already having the experience right i've chosen to do this for me 
and now I'm ready to receive whatever it is that is going to um, inspire me or open me up or, you know, heal whatever it is that I'm ready for. Yeah, I love that. And again, I feel like, you know, some days that could be a really like empowering song. Some days it can be like a softer song, right? And really feeling into like what that is for you today. So I'm just really going to like directly invite the audience, you know, can you make a commitment to yourself? If this resonates, of course, can you make a commitment to yourself to do that for 30 days straight? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're like, okay, I'll do it every day. And then we kind of start and we let it, let it drop off. And sometimes having a, a, a commitment of a certain amount of time. Okay. Like I'm going to do it for these 30 days. There's an end in sight. Uh, and so that kind of helps part of our, our mind, but also there's a goal. There's a, there's a, you know, something to work towards and that helps the, the masculine support the feminine energy in this exploration. Just see what happens, right? See what happens if you commit to 30 days, 45 days. What is it? I think it's like 30 or 45 days that they say, like you, you reprogram into uh, some form of a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 30 days. It's yeah. funny that you say that because I've committed to 365 days. Well, there you go. A day. I know. I was like, I do this anyway. You know, when it's something that's already become your practice, yeah. I might as well add that extra bit of spice that's going to ignite me into, and I felt it like the next, you know, level, whatever that is, just that commitment of every single day, whether it's in the morning or, you know, in the evening, there's no rules about when it is, but it's one song. And I found that actually mm. some mornings I'm really ready to go for that one song. And then sometimes I want to wait until the evening. And mm. yeah, so the, the songs will be different. It will be a song that I want to just wind down to and you know, explore my sensuality and maybe in the morning if I want to feel like I need to energize or I'm working through an emotion because that's also what's so powerful about movement is if we're feeling groggy or just like pissed off or just frustrated, take that into the song, feel it, move it through your body. And that's what I find so powerful is we can use it to let our emotions, you know, go so that then we're not taking that frustration into the day which is very easy to do if we're not um conscious of it or even for some women it might be bringing it back right they might be having frustration at work and bringing that back into their home so maybe they can take some time in between when they first come home and work out that frustration so they're not bringing it into their families it's just it's a really great concept you should do some some challenges my love um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know, to the audience, if, if you're listening, I mean, Gigi's doing it for 365 days, you know, reach out to her. She can support you in a shorter challenge, or maybe you mm. want to bite off a big chunk and do 365 days too. <laughs> uh, and how can they, how can they reach out to you? How can they find you? So it's funny because I'm starting this, um, this, uh, I can't even think of the word, now. membership, which is called Wild, Wildly Alive Women. Mm -hmm. which is basically to have a space where we show up to do these things regularly and have a space where we're supportive of one another. We're finding that wild aliveness through these practices that I've been talking about. So if that is feeling resonant to you and you are ready for a space where you can commit, you can be supported to show up for the play, for the curiosities, for the embodiment, then let me know. And you can reach out, um, either on my Embodied Women Facebook page, it's just Embodied Women, um, or my private Facebook page, which is Gigi. I think it's very simple with me. Um, and then there are some other links as well, which Alara will share. But that, those are the quickest ways to connect with me. Um, and also Instagram is Embodied Women 1. So any of, any of those places, you can send me a message, reach out, so I'm really interested in what you've been talking about and I want to know, you know, I also offer one-to-one -one, um, mentorship, but the, the sisterhood, I'm really feeling this, like this place for us as women mm -hmm. to nurture that world life together is very exciting. It feels, you know, really good for us to be supporting one another. 
Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, so reach out and um, maybe, you know, the audience, maybe you have a, a friend or somebody that you would really enjoy doing it with too and you can bring that person in with you sometimes that feels good too to have like somebody already like kind of a sister that you can bring into the sisterhood and sometimes you'd rather just go in and not know anybody and, and kind of cultivate that completely new energy so please share this episode um, and get this information out there as far as this is you know this is a revolution that is happening on our planet right now and so if you're listening to this and you feel some level of, of being drawn in, even if there's apprehension and like, I don't know, this is crazy or whatever, that little magnetic pull is you connecting to that stream of consciousness that is the revolution. And it's exciting. It's exhilarating. It's, it's a whole new space for humanity. And definitely, you know, Gigi and I invite you in and reach out to her, connect to her, just even just follow her so that you can see her dancing. I know that she's sharing some reels of her dancing. Feel inspired, you know, feel inspired by her beautiful movement, by her beautiful energy. And Gigi, my love, as always, it's just, you know, we're, we're always connecting, but it's always so delicious and good. So I'm so glad to have you. And I'll definitely have you on again. So mm. we'll do it more. I loved it. Thank you. And so much goodness came from that as well for us to hear as well. That's what's so powerful about having these conversations together. It's like, oh, another you know reminder of all the things that we know are so supportive to us. Yeah, we always need reminders. We always, we always need reminders. So yes, that's what it's all for, to remind and inspire. So thank you all to the listeners. Again, this is, this space is here because you exist. And I am so deeply grateful for you being here, for showing up for yourself, for showing up for humanity. I love you all so very, very much. Thank you for being a part of the Ecstatic Woman podcast as you experience each new day. We want you to feel that you are capable of tapping into your inner wisdom and living your life ecstatically. If you want to be invited back to the next episode, just subscribe to our podcast. And if you need more information in the meantime, go to alarasage.com.